30-story building. Gone in just eight seconds. Was it weak concrete? A failed column? Maybe. But the real cause was something hidden. Something most people overlook. Torsion. In this video I'll show, including a demonstration in slide four, you how even the strongest part of the structure, the concrete core, can fail, simply because it was in the wrong place. On the right side of the screen, you can see the core highlighted in red. That same core is shown twisting in the animation, the part that was meant to keep the entire building standing. Let's take another look at the collapse of the skyscraper in Bangkok. The footage shows the building from three different angles. You'll notice that the first visible movement happens at the top of the building. This matches what we saw earlier. Torsional rotation appears strongest at the top. But here's the important part. While the twisting is visible higher up, the greatest torsional stresses and moments actually occur at the base. I'll show you how that works in the next sections. So what do we see? Biggest movement at the top, but the structure fails lower down. At the moment the column breaks, the core fails too. And then the entire structure comes down. This is what's called a pancake collapse. Floor after floor collapses on the one below until there's nothing left. Torsion is a twisting motion around a building's vertical axis. During an earthquake, the ground moves, but the building's mass responds with a delay. That creates internal twisting forces. In the images, you can see sections of the building. The top right shows earthquake forces in the X direction. The core takes the load first, but the floors, connected to the core, move slightly later like a swinging mass. Because the core isn't centered or doesn't run the full width, the whole structure starts to twist. That's torsion. To yeah. clarify how torsion develops, I made a simple demonstration. This big bottle represents the concrete core. This small bottle stands for the center of mass. And the cardboard on top represents the floor slab. Now watch what happens when I apply a horizontal movement. You can see the floor starts to twist and shift. This is torsion in action. The floor isn't just sliding. It's dancing around the mass. Because the mass and the core are not aligned, this twisting motion transfers stress back into the core. That's exactly what happened in the skyscraper. The core couldn't resist the torsion anymore, and the building collapsed. Torsion becomes even more severe on the upper floors, because the core is smaller and narrower there, as shown in the top right corner of the drawing. To demonstrate what that shape does to the building, I created a simple dummy model. In this setup, the torsional loads at the base increase by about 1.5 times, simply due to the shape of the upper section. You can see it clearly here. The lever arms highlighted in blue are twice as long. That longer distance between the mass and the core creates a much larger torsional moment at the base of the structure. This is why even small changes in geometry at the top can lead to major stress and damage down below. If we take a closer look at the torsional forces in the skyscraper, we can now see more locally how they behave along the connection between the floors and the core. The torsional moments are highest near the base of the building, and they gradually decrease as we go up. Around floor 19, we notice a significant transition. The core halves in size, which creates a local peak in torsional stress right at that level. Above that point, the moments get smaller and smaller with height. But keep in mind, the actual torsional moments in reality would likely be even higher than in my model. Why? Because my model uses two closed profiles in one U-shape, while the real core, as seen in the previous scenes, has many openings, which makes it far less effective in resisting torsion. In the image on the left, I've highlighted which core shapes are structurally favorable and which ones are not. So when we see the columns failing in the video, what's really happening? At that point, the columns are trying to deal with torsion because the core most likely failed earlier near the bottom floors. The torsional load that the core can no longer resist gets pushed into the columns and they're simply not designed to handle that but the columns fail instantly too. Once the structure loses its vertical load path, there's nothing left to carry the weight. The building collapses, floor after floor, in just a few seconds. What if the core had been placed in the center? What if there had been more lateral walls at the base instead of a soft story? Investigators have pointed out several issues. The number of shear walls may have been insufficient. The core walls were made thinner for architectural reasons. The quality of the concrete changed and the steel used didn't meet the expected standard. Torsion doesn't break buildings directly. But when the design isn't right, and the construction can't handle the loads, collapse can happen, suddenly and completely. If you found this helpful, please like the video and subscribe to get my next breakdowns recommended to you. Thanks for watching.